There are so many MSRA resources out there and I have tried pretty much them all. In this video I'm cutting through the noise and I'm going to talk about the best MSRA revision resources in my opinion and telling you what actually worked for me. Hi guys I'm Tria and I'm a junior doctor working in London. I graduated from Oxford in 2022. In part one of this video series I talked about my MSRA scores and exactly how much I revised so check that one out if you haven't seen it yet. In this video I'm going to be talking about what resources I used to revise and what I actually did during my revision. So just to quickly recap, I got 582 and I applied for psychiatry and this put me at a ranking of 208 in the country out of 7,845. And I talk about the exact breakdown of my scores in the first video. Right, let's talk about revision resources and the most important thing in my opinion is question banks. There are so many question banks out there and anyone who's done medical school or medical exams knows that question banks are the way forward. And let me talk about each one I used and what I liked about them and what I didn't. So the first one I used was Path Medicine. You probably all know this question bank, it's one of the most popular ones out there. This was familiar to me from medical school. So Path Medicine was the question bank that I completed first. When I say completed, I mean I did all the questions once. What's good about Path Medicine, in my opinion, is that it has this feature where you can search up different topics and you can see the little information notes that they give you. And these are quite succinct and give you the key points for every different topic. But the only thing is that it's not super detailed and I definitely wouldn't recommend learning from this. I think it's a good resource to use as revision but if you are learning things for the first time like you maybe studied something in third year of medical school and you've completely forgotten it then I wouldn't use past medicine just to learn new things. I really recommend going old school and learning things actually from a textbook. So the textbook that I loved using in medical school and I still really think provides one of the clearest and most succinct explanations is Kumar and Clark's book. So that was my go-to for learning or relearning new concepts but as a question bank I think it's definitely one that is worth trying. So the second question mark that I used was past test. This was also one that I tried in medical school and was familiar with, the layout. This actually was my personal favourite for the clinical paper. Now the website isn't as nice and easy to use as the past medicine in my opinion, although it's okay, it doesn't glitch or anything. I really like this question bank because I felt like the explanations that they gave were much more detailed than those in past medicine and they're quite thorough. I felt like they went into more detail than past med, which is quite nice. The good thing about past test is that it has an app which I could use and download questions which meant that I could do questions on the train when I didn't have any service and that was really good just for getting the number of questions that I did every day up. I think maybe PassMed does have an app but I think maybe it's for iPhone only but I didn't use an app for PassMed and that's why I really liked the app in PassTest. So I talk about my revision timetable more in my first video but I had essentially planned to revise for about three and a half months. Because I applied for psychiatry I was told I had to sit the MSRA in the second sitting which is in February. That meant that I got an extra one month of revision time that I hadn't really planned for, which was good. Obviously, I wasn't upset about that, which meant that I had about four and a half months of time where I could revise for this paper. So because of that reason, I finished the two question banks, past med and past test, quite quickly. And then I had to explore other question banks, which I had never used before. And the next one I decided to use was eMedica and I know a lot of people talk about it but it's not one that I'm familiar with at all and I thought it was okay. There's not as many questions as the first two question banks. They were quite hard actually and I did find that especially some topics like infectious diseases and pharmacology I was getting a lot of questions wrong and it's kind of especially if you're an overachiever and someone who's you know grown up being an academic perfectionist it's quite hard to get questions wrong but I think it's really important to learn and to grow and to let go of your academic perfectionist tendencies. Ebedica is something that I don't regret doing I think it was good to do those questions. The only thing I didn't like about this resource was that they split up the questions based on the topics so there was a set of questions for cardiology, respiratory and so on and you couldn't mix the questions up when you were doing them and I didn't like this because in the real exam obviously the questions aren't going to be separated they're all going to be mixed up so I wanted to train my brain to have to switch between the different topics I didn't want to just get used to doing all neurology questions in one go so that's just one thing that I had a problem with and because eMedica doesn't actually have that many questions I finished this resource in a couple of weeks actually and found myself then searching again for another question bank I then went to MediBuddy because I'd heard from other people that this was a resource that they used this was okay it had a lot of 
of questions, which was good because I just wanted to get through the questions at this point. I started this about one month before my actual exam, but the problem was the AI that they use is quite glitchy. So I ended up getting lots of repeats of questions and the website was a bit clunky. So it wasn't my favorite resource, not gonna lie. Those were all the question marks I use. I would definitely recommend starting with past test and past medicine. I don't necessarily think you need to use the other ones, but like I said, the only reason I actually use those is because I ran out of questions because I had more time to revise than I was planning for initially. Another thing that I did use to try to make more questions was ChatGPT. I used ChatGPT to help me come up with questions for a specific topic. So for example, I asked it to make me a set of questions on hematology, for example, for the level of the MSRA. And I used this specifically to target a few topics that I was struggling with. Although I don't know if I'd really recommend doing this because I stopped after a few days just because I was a little skeptical about the sources for their questions and whether their answers were fully accurate and up to date and targeted at a UK medical audience. For example, a lot of things are regional, like antibiotic choices, and I was just unsure about what ChatGPT was actually using. So when I was using ChatGPT, I was using it with caution and kind of taking their answers with a pinch of salt, especially if I didn't agree with some of the answers. This is the prompt that I used for ChatGPT but probably be careful if you're using that and I definitely wouldn't use it as my only resource. Obviously, another thing that's really important is the official past papers. When I was revising, there was only one official past paper on the website. So I did the clinical paper a few times. I found that the clinical paper was much easier than the actual exam. So be careful because if I had just revised based on that paper, I would have been stumped at the exam because the MSRA questions went into a lot more detail than what the past paper suggests. Let's talk about the professional dilemma section, which is much harder to revise for in my opinion. The way I revised was I spent about 80 to 90% of my time revising for the clinical paper and 10 to 20% of my time revising for the professional dilemmas paper. I don't regret doing this because actually the professional dilemmas questions are not really about your knowledge and what you've studied, but they're rather about your understanding of ethical principles and logic and pretty much just common sense. The way I revised for this, and the most important thing I did, in this case, I actually used the official past paper that the MSRA website provides. And I repeated this past paper four times in the month before the exam. This way, by the end of that fourth time, I pretty much memorized the questions and the logical principles behind them. And whenever you do the professional dilemmas exam, like also if you have done the SJT in medical school, you always come out feeling confused and not sure whether you chose the right answer or not, because the questions are designed to be kind of confusing with many answers that have quite similar themes. So I think regardless of what revision you're going to do, you'll come out feeling a bit confused. For this paper, I do think that the past paper, the official past paper, did reflect the real exam definitely much more accurately than the clinical paper. Another thing that I did for the PD revision was read the GMC's Good Medical Practice, which is their document which goes through all the different moral and ethical principles that go behind being a good doctor. And the reason why you should do this is because it will help you to understand the logic with which the official questions are allegedly written. Essentially, this paper is not about what you've learned or your knowledge, it's about your time management, your common sense and your exam strategy. The most important thing I think is to remember that it's not about what you would do in this question. It's asking you, what do you think their ideal candidate would do? Their ideal doctor. Now this isn't you. And the way to find out who this ideal candidate is, is to repeat that official past paper and see their answers and what they've chosen as the right answers. So this candidate you'll find out is someone who's quite righteous and avoids conflict, but prefers direct communication and is very honest and on top of everything puts patient safety first. And while this may be you, remember it's not about your personal opinions, it's about what they think is right. And if you have this attitude, I think it makes it a lot easier to answer the questions. Here are my key tips. Number one is do as many questions as you can and try to spread them out over more than one question bank just so that you get used to different styles of questions. Number two is try to look for discount codes. All of these question banks you have to pay for and that can range from anywhere between 10 pounds 
pounds to 40, 50 pounds. Now this can really add up. So what I would do before I subscribe to any question bank was search for discount codes. There's so many online that give you 10% off, 15% off. They're actually not that difficult to find. I would really recommend looking for those just to save some money. Number three is if you're struggling with a topic, rather than trying to rote memorize it, just go back to a textbook and read the explanations there. It's so much easier to spend like half an hour revising like pulmonary embolism and how it happens and why the complications happen rather than just trying to memorize a list because in medicine you just have so many things that you need to learn you can't memorize everything and if you have fundamental understanding that will just make your life so much easier. Number four is the professional dilemmas questions and I would just recommend sticking to the official past paper and repeating that and learning the logic that they want and number five is remember the professional dilemmas questions is about strategy and it's not about what you would do it's about what you think the ideal candidate would do which might be different to what you do in reality. I think that if you've come to the point in your medical journey that you are sitting the MSRA, then you're probably pretty good at taking exams. You've been through school, you've been through medical school and you're here now. So trust yourself and don't get too worried about what other people are doing and what they're not doing. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Good luck if you are planning to sit the MSRA at any point. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and comment on this video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.